oak wilt infestation led to clear-cutting acres of trees on the forested campus of the Woodland School, teachers Leslie Goodrick Scanlon and Ned Milne recognized the proverbial teachable moment. Teachers and students could learn how to steward forest together. We're all comfortable enough to learn stuff along with the kids and be able to share things back and forth and then have experts come in and present more information. Here at, at our school, we try to go as in-depth as possible. We were hoping to hook them by getting them involved in the field right away, getting them outside, getting them to, to be, at least to see things and to start learning things by what they see and what they're interacting with, as opposed to reading about it in the book or on the internet. To help design the project and build connections with forestry experts, these teachers reached out to the Grand Traverse Stewardship Initiative, or GTSI. Part of a statewide nonprofit service organization, GTSI helped the team create a project plan and engage experts and funded some of the activities. So the students were partnered with their forester, Paul Gerhardt, and MSU Extension, Eyes on the Forest, to help learn about what is going on on their campus, why were so many trees taken down with the oak wilt disease that came through this campus, and in the greater context of climate change, how, can, how could they make some recommendations to their forester about what trees to plant to reforest this campus, this 250-acre campus? A key part of a forest management plan these days is watching for and controlling invasive forest pests. Together, Woodland School teachers and students are learning what some of these pests might be and how to spot them. I, I work for MSU Extension as a natural resources educator, and part of my job is to be the volunteer coordinator for the Eyes on the Forest Sentinel Tree Monitoring Program. And that's a program that teaches people about invasive species, some that we don't have yet in Michigan, like the Asian longhorn beetle, others that we do have in Michigan, like the hemlock woolly adelgid, and makes people aware of those species so that they can detect them early, so that they know what they see if they see these bugs, insects, diseases, and can report those to the proper authorities that way we can el elicit an early detection and a rapid response to eliminate these invasive species from our Michigan forested landscape. On this day, the teachers and students learned from Julie Crick how to identify, collect data, and track a sentinel tree. This data will help the statewide effort to find and control invasive forest pests. They first took the circumference of the tree so that they could use math, their math skills, to figure out the diameter of the tree. And from there, we asked them to look at where the tree is in relation to the other trees growing around it, the health of that tree, the condition of the bark, um, the condition of the leaves. Have the leaves been chewed by insects? Are there any holes in the bark or in the trunk that would indicate insects coming out of the tree? Um, are there any dead branches up in the top of the tree that would indicate maybe an infestation of an insect or a disease of some sort in that tree? Those students will go back to the sentinel trees that they identified and collect data to input into the Eyes in the Forest database. And that data is used across the entire state of Michigan to help track when problematic species or diseases show up in trees across the state. If we were successful today, the kids would leave here after eighth grade, because they go to multiple different high schools in the area, and take not just their knowledge, but their work ethic, their ability to work well with others, respect for themselves, the environment, and, and help share that with kids in other, other places of the community or of the world that maybe otherwise haven't been brought up with those same kind of standards and morals.